Good morning. Please stand as we begin our worship together this morning. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guide my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. seated. It is good to have you in worship with us today, whether you're in person or online. We are First United Methodist Church Ministries. We are one mission, one vision, two campuses, Pendleton and Ingalls. We're glad you're here to worship, whether ever you are. We have people watching in a variety of places all across the world. So we give thanks to God for you. This week we have a plethora of birthdays. Michelle Childers is it for this week. And she's 29. So celebrate that. You should get all the kudos this week. Next week we have more people, but today it's just you. So today, um, just a brief announcement. Um, we need some more people to sign up for Trunk or Treat. We have six out of the 20 that we're hoping for Trunk or Treat. If you could do that, if you would sign up. And then we also need a lot of candy because we anticipate having a bunch of people coming through. Um, so 
Let's get connected, let's get involved in that way. And so far, we've received candy, and I've yet to open a box or a bag to try any. That's so far, by the way. Anyway, let's center our hearts and prayers once more as uh, we receive the centering music from, from Shirley this morning.
sent you a text. So when you, sometimes when you do worship, you try to communicate by text. Some people don't look at their phone while you're texting them. So that's okay, Brent. I won't say anything. You know what? Let me invite everybody to sing some hymns with us this morning. How about that? You want to do that? I'd be glad to. That's what that text said, wasn't it? Okay. Again, what a blessing it is to be here together to worship in the various ways that we do. Um, and no matter whether or not we get the message, we know that uh, there's a reason that we're all called here together today. So please join with us as we sing, Be Thou My Vision. Scripture reading this morning is taken from the second chapter of the book of Joel, verses 28 through 32. Hear the word of the Lord, and afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Actually, visions. <laughs> Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in song, He Touched Me. Touch me, 
Lamont's not here today, but I think you could do this with me. We're going to do the chorus. And we're going to do it. If you do give us a chord, we're going to do it a cappella. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Lately, I've... Um found myself maybe in a, in a little bit of a conundrum of, of where my spiritual life is taking me, and I know we all find that uh, as we ebb and flow throughout our life, and um, I've, I've found myself having to kind of recenter and refocus on what it is outside of Sunday mornings uh, that I'm called uh, to do and, uh, and to be, and I think um, as this week went on, I had uh, some things kind of speak to me, um, and one in particular, I had a friend who had uh, uh, passed away eight years ago this week, and um, it was somebody who felt that they did not belong on this earth uh, any longer, and his mother still struggles with um, this on a daily basis, and she sent me a nice note that said she was uh, struggling to find the words for the day, and um, so this song today is for her and for you and anybody else uh, who feels uh, some hurt or some pain or maybe that lack of direction, where do I go, who do I speak to? Um, this is a prayer, prayer for you. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven, and I pray this for you. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today I pray miracles over your life in Jesus name in Jesus the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every promise, He is faithful to keep. 
I speak the name no grave could ever hold. For he is greater, he is stronger, he's the God impossible. I pray for your healing, that circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, come believe it, come receive it. Oh, the power of the Spirit is now forever yours. I pray for your healing, the circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray for a breakthrough, that it would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come alive in Jesus' name, in Jesus' That was for us. Thank you very much. So at this time, uh, Pam Shug is going to be teaching the kids for Sunday school. They look borderline thrilled, don't they, as they were heading out. So I want to share with you, this is the time where I say thank you. Thank you for the way that you share in your gifts and your love to the church. Our mission statement is be the love, so every time we do this, we know that these statements are wrapped in love. So we ask that you give to the church by the way of your prayers, your presence, your time, talent, gifts, service, and your witness. I want to thank all the people that helped out with the uh, fish fry, uh, all the coordinating, all the purchasing, all the putting together, all of the fixing, frying, serving, delivering, eating, cleaning up, setting up, all of that stuff. Thank you. I think we served around 200 people. That's pretty good. Um, we know that fish went up, the cost of fish went up, so our margin of profit is probably not going to be huge, but as Ken Tullis says, it's not about the money. Well, yeah, it kind of is, but it's also about the fellowship and the connectedness that we have. In the drive through saw a number of cars and a number of people I've not seen before. So that's pretty neat with that happening. So anyway, we give thanks to God. One of the ways that we do best is that we pray for one another. We lift up one another in prayer 
And we help people, we drive them to places for appointments, for connection, and that's, that's a blessing. I'd like to just share a short story. Um, my father-in-law had a procedure Friday morning, so we were there for that. Walking into the hospital outpatient area, we saw a couple that we had not seen in a while. They were our neighbors in 1987 when we were appointed to Utica New Chapel Churches, Rick and Beck Smith, and Rick and Beck were godparents to one of our sons. They lived right next door. They had two daughters, Emily and Allison, who ran our kids ragged. We also had another couple on the other side with two kids, Mandy and Jennifer Newton. All of them were in middle school, high school age. So we had free babysitting. So imagine walking into outpatient and seeing them. Rick was having a sur uh, surgical procedure, but what a joy we were able to sit and talk with them for a bit. So you never know when God's gonna put people in your life to pray for, to be with and be around and to connect with. So I'm gonna share some names. Since our last conversation, there was another hurricane, Hurricane Milton. People are still going through Hurricane Helene in North Carolina all the way through. I talked to a pastor friend who lived at the villages in Florida and they had a camper in North Carolina. Both places were impacted. So I said, what are you gonna do? He said, oh, we've already moved back to Carmel. We figure four hurricanes in 14 months is enough. So they've moved. We want to remember my father-in-law, Buford Head, Rick Smith, Danny O'Brien, our bass player in the praise team, lost his sister suddenly, Marilyn Gregory. So remember uh, that family in prayer. Dan Olson has a connected person that has passed away funeral I think is going to be this week so Dan and the rest of the family you're in our prayers Priscilla McAllister Mike Gilmore Pat Peterson, Ken Cobb uh, G Joanne a friend of LeVay Dutton Kim Dout Doster she had surgery this past week procedure went well Nancy Winant, Nancy Hunsaker John Sylvie Delight Kahn Sam Denny, Teresa Stinson, Lillian Sorley, Charlie and Becky Wiley, Jan Johnson, Shirley Henderson, Jennifer King, teacher friends of Jill Schellenberger, Whitney Jones, Linda Pennington, Carrie Bond, Norma Jean Buck, Tammy McKean, Doris Gust, Don Gernon, Kathy Moore, Kathy Barber. Lord, it seems like our list is pretty long, but there are still more things we could pray for. As we reflect quietly upon that prayer, Ryan will ease us into song for our prayers. As I often do, 
every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a heart. come to you in the name of Jesus, asking you to embrace us with your love and your grace. Fill us with your compassion for one another so that we may share that love and grace with others, with the integrity of the witness of your spirit. May it flow through us so that we may be an ambassador and a disciple of you. Help us to render ourselves free from who we want to be and accept who you want us to be. And then guide us down that path to become that ultimate witness that you see in us. Lord, we pray that the obstacles that come into our lives, whether they be emotional, physical, or spiritual, May they be pushed aside so that we could see you clearly, embrace you fully, and be undergirded by your presence. Lord, empower, equip, anoint, and help us to be a witness to the faith. And Lord, if there are times that we feel weak, incapable, unable, not quite sure what to say or do or think. Be patient with us. But we ask that you don't leave us. Stay with us. Help us along the journey. May we feel your presence, O oh Lord. And let us hear the remainder of the song, and then we'll do the Lord's Prayer at the end. One response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. So
So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Stand for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, help us as we share in the prayer that you have taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to share the scripture with you from the message translation. Same passage, Joel 2, 28 through 32. And that's just the beginning. After that, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy and also your daughters. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. I've even pour out my spirit upon all the servants, men and women both. I'll set wonders in the sky above and the signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the judgment day of God, the day of tremendous and awesome, whoever calls help God gets help. O Mountain Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be a great rescue, just as God said. Included in the survivors are those that God calls. Again, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dreams and visions said the old men will dream dreams and the young men will see visions or the old people will dream dreams and the young people will see visions. And we've been raised and taught that it's really the other way around. That the old persons will see visions and the young people will dream the dreams. How many of you dream how many of you can remember your dreams? Sometimes, and how come some of your dreams don't make sense? Psychologists say that if you can remember your dream vividly, you're in the one percentile. If you could recall part of your dream, then you're 20 percentile. Are the odds favorably getting better? And if you know you're dreamed and you can't remember what in the world you dreamed about, you're 60%. Now that's interesting, isn't it? I heard the person the other day, I said, how are you doing? And he said, I am living the dream. And he said it in a very sarcastic tone. As if to say, I'm not really living the dream. And so I, my response, and I probably shouldn't have been as uniquely verbal as I was. I said, do you know nightmares are also dreams? Oh, that was funny. No, it wasn't? Anyway, he looked at me and he said, gosh, you're right. You're right. 
Have you ever thought, I want to go to sleep and I'm going to dream? And I'm going to have good dreams. My mom and dad would say this before I would go to bed. Maybe you've heard this phrase. Sweet dreams. I don't think my dad or my mom ever said, I hope you have horrible nightmares. No, they never did that. They wanted me to sleep peacefully. But what does it mean to dream dreams and to see visions? It means not to be satisfied with the here and the now. Go deeper. Look at aspirational goals or make concrete goals that will help us be better. Let's never be satisfied with the here and now. Because what that can be, satisfaction can bring complacency. Complacency can bring apathy. Apathy can bring disappointment. Disappointment can bring frustration. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had his famous speech, I have a dream. And in the dream, he, in that speech, he talked about how all people would be equal how all people would be given the opportunity to recognize what it means to be peaceful in this world without prejudice, without looking at someone and already determining what type of person they were going to be or how they were going to act. I have a dream. I have a dream for the church. I have a dream for the church that it would look into itself and find ways to be better. I have a dream for the church that it would look into the presence of God and recognize we're not doing what we should be to reach people for Jesus Christ. We've been pretty comfortable here at Pendleton First. We've been blessed by people who have given financially who give to care and needs, but it's got to be more than that. It needs to be outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual grace giving to one another the love of God in this world. That means living foremost for Jesus, not for self. The vision and the dream that Joel had was trying to get people to embrace the next. One of our favorite shows, and Debbie and I have watched every episode, at least once, maybe more, was The West Wing. It was written by Alan Sorkin, fabulous writer, producer. But the president at the time, Martin Sheen, would say this to his staff, when he wanted to move on, he would say, can anybody remember what he would say? Okay, you need to go binge watch this. He would say, what's next? And when he said what ne what's next, he didn't mean let's continue to linger and discuss that which we've already done. He would say, what's next? meant let's move on. My favorite advocate and my best supporter is my wife, Debbie. Sometimes Debbie will explain something to me and, and I get it, or sometimes she doesn't think I get it, and so she tells me again. And sometimes she really thinks I don't pay attention, so she tells me a third time. And then I use that all-compassing phrase, I get it, what's next? And then she'll reiterate what she had said before to make it a full circle to know that I heard her. And sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes I hear, and sometimes I don't acknowledge that I hear. 
Is that called selective hearing? I know none of you have done that, so I'm, I'm preaching just to me. But I, I was reading and I heard in a podcast about how we should pay more intentional on and spend more intentional time on listening to what someone says and how one says it. So just to be clear on the podcast, I didn't pay much attention. Come on, folks. That's how we are, isn't it? The podcast had some great ideas on selective listening and how we can overcome that. Said how we should be intentional, intentional about listening for key words. Well, my key words are go, yes, okay. But the details kind of go in and out sometimes. I wonder, I just wonder, in my vision, in my focus, in my dream world, about being the best possible pastor I could be or the best Christian witness I can be that I don't pay clear enough attention to God's details. There's a possibility that that could occur. There's a good possibility that you're halfway paying attention to me this morning. There's a possibility that you're paying no attention to me this morning. Or you're thinking, I've got to get home soon because that meatloaf is still cooking. And I've got, oh, he better hurry up. I had a church organist at Pleasant View United Methodist Church. She was a music teacher in the elementary school. And she had a tendency to come in and tell me, you've got 45 minutes because I've got a meatloaf in the oven. After the third time she told me that, I said, you may need to go let somebody check it out because it may burn today. And she's like, oh, oh my goodness. So her husband went to go check. See how we listen to some things and we don't listen to others? Debbie has a unique situation that she gives me directions, but sometimes it's not the right directions because her right and left are are messed up. No fault of her own. She was aggressive as a child. She started walking before she started crawling. And they say if you do that, your sense of direction is askew. How many other people have a sense of misdirection? Anybody? Yay, we're not alone. But it's even more complicated when you have unique situations that occur. Debbie was explaining what happened to her with my sister this weekend. My sister said, well, how are your eyes? And Debbie said, I believe my eyes are okay. They are what they are. But part of my brain is not functioning well. And my sister went, what? That's what happens when you have a brain stroke that that part is not coming back. But thanks be to God, through occupational therapy, she's learning some compensatory ways to get better. Her aspirational goal is to drive to CVS or to the grocery or to church without having to depend on me. Now, 
In order to do that, she has to take a test. Someone's going to have to come to the house and do an evaluation. And if you want more details, ask Carrie Stilwell. She knows about that stuff. But Debbie's like, I'm a little scared. And the therapist that she's working with now, oh, it, you just take a driving test like you did when you got your license. And Debbie said, I didn't have to do a driving test. I got a waiver. And they said, well, we'll just ask you to do simple things like parallel park. And Debbie said, I've never parallel parked. And I'm not going to start. But in Debbie's mind, the idea of driving on an interstate is probably going to be limited to now. She could see, but only in parts. And I've really taken a lot of reflection upon that in my spiritual life, because there are times when I think I see clearly, like it says in 1 Corinthians 13. Now I see in a mirror dimly, then I will see clearly. And that's the revelation of Christ in their lives. How many of you looked in the mirror to comb or brush your hair? Or at least to see if things looked halfway decent? Probably most of us. Now I have gotten to the place where due to my chronological giftedness, it doesn't take me near as long to check my hair as it used to. When I was in high school, I had hair down to my shoulders. I was a stud muffin. <laughs> wire rim glasses, big goggle wire rim glasses, braces, hair parted down the middle. and Yeah, I was all over it. I'm not showing you a picture. Well, maybe. Someday. You don't believe I had long hair. Is that what it is? Yeah, okay. It's going to take bribery to get that done. By the way, you need to hear this, and it's not about me, because I don't want you to think that. But this month is Pastor Appreciation Month. So I would like for you at some time during the rest of this time to tell Robin Axel Adams, thank you for your service. I want you to tell Pastor Susan Barrett and Pastor Mary Cloud, thank you for your service. That's how you live out your faithfulness. That's how you live out the dreams to become reality, your visions to become purpose. You focus on the present with intentionality. I was on a Zoom workshop last week about intentional discipleship. And the key phrase was, live into your faith to where you express it to someone else. So that's your plan. That's your task. That's your challenge. Not to go and have dreams. Not to go and have visions. But to be who God's called you to be. And if by some chance you live into a vision world of doing something extra for Jesus, then do something with it. Don't just come up with an idea and talk about it and then do nothing. The church has thrived for years on a lot of conversation, but little action. So God is saying, act. Act on the visions, act on the dreams. But act on what I'm encouraging you to do and to be.
not me, God talking to you. Lord, help us in the next steps. Help us to be the person you've called us to be. Help us to feel your love. Fulfill your purpose. And then, Lord, rain down your grace upon us. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. God, help us in the next. And what's next? Help us to focus on you. And may we be a representative of your great love. Lord, bless us as we go our separate ways. Keep true in us the love of God that we may find comfort and peace and grace and hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord. The earth is filled with his glory. The unfortunate part is sometimes people don't see that, and that's what we're called to do. Live out intentionally. Share his love. Share the glory of the Lord with everybody. So please stand with us as we sing. In closing today, holy is the Lord. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we see Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory
I was uh, reminded of a quote here I'll share with you in just a minute as I listened to Pastor John today. And he said a lot of things that, uh, to me, are scary. Uh, in my line of work, we teach that complacency is dangerous. And complacency is dangerous in a lot of aspects of life because when we become satisfied and complacent, we miss opportunities. We miss actionable moments. And so I was reminded of a, of a, uh, a quote that I read out of Rick Warren's book, a purpose-driven life or purpose-driven church. And it says, if we are not taking risks in our ministry, it's not requiring us to have faith. And we are people of faith, so we must, must take, take risks. Whether it's here as a group, as a congregation, as a church, or you individually. This week, take a risk. Step out of your comfort zone. Offer a kind word, a kind hand, a kind gesture to somebody. Take a risk. And it'll require you to have faith, and we'll be better for it. Go in peace. Please, oh Lord.